So um, before I begin, I just want to remind you guys that there is a holiday sketch challenge going on right now, and it is it is sketching the elves. I can't pin more than one thing in the community. I don't know why. I wish I could pin like all of the challenges that are currently running. I have to keep the grant pinned, um, but. Uh, uh, but uh, I wish I could also pin and just remind you guys that there's also the uh, the the elf, the drawing the elf design, and it's going to be due on the 23rd, I think, or 22nd. So it'll be due this Thursday, the next Thursday. And uh, there are some tiny little rewards if the notes that you guys make are good. I also reward you. Um, and I'm probably going to choose one of them to render. I really do want to actually choose one of them and render it out. Um, for you guys, just as a little treat, <clears throat> entertainment or something like that. Uh, but um, but that that's that's one of the bigger announcements. Um, this another announcement is the transformation grant is open, and you guys have an opportunity to apply to win lots of rewards. Um, it's like a scholarship. You win classes with me. I might raise up the hours that you guys win with me um, to three sessions instead of just two. And uh, if if time allows, I'm really booked in the in after the after Christmas, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, these two these two challenges are open for you guys. I will start running um, polls again in January. So the poll would be, I would give you options of what theme we're going to be uh, working on for the next uh, theme, like the, for the sketching theme or design theme, and uh, and you guys choose the you vote. We, 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 I build a resource pack and I have that resource pack available for you to download on my website and um, from there we just, uh, you know, you guys are given an amount of time to sketch and design as you're supposed to and of course you win uh, rewards. I'm going to try to make the rewards a little bit more competitive but they're not really like contest contests. Uh, it's more like just to keep your portfolios full of variety so you guys don't just um, you know feel the dullness of every day or if you run out of ideas these these challengers are supposed to provide you with ideas to, to sketch I also love them they really inspire me to just keep sketching um, but, uh, but yeah those are the two <clears throat> uh, announcements and uh, themes will be back up in January polls as well uh, along with uh, you know continuing this the, the critique hour so I chose a lot of stuff to look at today, I am completely out of breath, and um, I have, have a really bad cold, and I'm just really, really sick. And I told you guys that like have a, have severe cold sensitivity, so if I have like a glass of water, I get really cold, and then I start um, exhibiting symptoms of pneumonia. So I, um, I uh, this is currently what happened to me. I had a, a cold slice of pizza, all right, <laughs> and then it all just started flaring back up. I know exactly what it is, so I, th I thank you all for your well wishes and stuff, but I don't know what it is, and it's not, like I told you guys before that I, um, this winter was going to kick my ass, and it, and it really has kicked my ass, I mean, even if the heat is on throughout the night, and everybody else in the house is like dying, and it's like a sauna, I'm still there shivering, so I, I, I'm trying my best to just stay healthy, because there's also other sessions that I have to host, but, um, I have to admit, it's getting very difficult to, to breathe. It's, like, hard to breathe right now. And, oh God, I'm so long-winded when I talk, so it's, like, I need an extra long or two just for my for how much I love to hear the sound of my own voice. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, uh, let's show you, let's let's take a quick look at Portrait Studio. The, the update has officially been released. If you guys have a copy of Portrait Studio, it should be updated by now. If you haven't updated it, open it up and let it patch. Um, so you guys can get the new uh, the new update. Basically, we changed everything. It was a complete overhaul. It was just a complete change, and everything to do with Portrait Studio. Um, so uh, so the the lighting was changed. The um, <clears throat> uh, the models were changed. We have bunches of new, a bunch of new models in. Um, you have a lot more control. You now have a skeleton that you can rig. We will add that as soon as possible. Um, as soon as it's uh, uh, balanced, uh, we'll be able to add that in uh, to, to Portrait Studio. You'll have a movable, posable skeleton. And then right after the skeleton, we'll try to get into a full body rig. I, I still haven't decided. It's really complicated. Um, again, there are inconsistencies between Maya and Unity, and, uh, and it's just uh, we're fighting against the programs we're using to, to release this. 
um, but I hope that we'll have a, a movable, posable body soon for you guys, and you guys will get that update. It won't be like a different program or anything. It'll be just the same old Portrait Studio. There are um, minor bugs that we've been ironing out. There, if we find more, please re uh, report them to us using Squarespace. I just go to my website and just do a, a form submission, and you'll be able to report any issues you have um, on the store. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, and then uh, we, we saw this last time, which is a little preview, no matter how many changes you add to the face. Um, they're visible if you wanted to, oops, they're visible here if you wanted to change, if you wanted to see the model from a different perspective, uh, you have that available to you here on the side, the second window. So whenever I mess around with the nose, I always want to make sure that I'm, that I'm looking at it from the side as well. Like, let's, let's make Benedict Cumberpatch. Um, all right, so his eyes are very, very close together. I probably need a, um, actually his eyes are far apart, yeah. All right, Benedict, and his mouth, I think that's it pretty much. He's just got a really, really high, yeah, that's him. <laughs> He's got a really high nose. I could just exaggerate it for like, you know, like caricature, caricature style. We can exaggerate these things. And his mouth is very wide. He's got a very big mouth. I'm sorry, Benedict, if you're watching this, which is very unlikely. <laughs> um, got a very big jaw as well. And the size of his mouth is actually pretty big. Let me Google him. Benedict Cumberpatch. Is it really Cumberpatch? Benedict Cucumber Factory? <laughs> is it really Cumberpatch? Because I'm thinking that I'm saying the wrong one by saying Cumberbatch. Cumber, Cumberbatch, not Cumberbatch. <laughs> Cucumberbatch. I keep saying that, I keep thinking I'm saying the wrong version of his name when I say his actual name. It's just such a ridiculous name. <clears throat> okay. So yes, he's got a very high nose, very big eyes. His eyes are very, very large. There has been a spider who has been stalking me throughout the house. And I keep thinking he's found me. Okay, so the size, <clears throat> it's very big, very, very big eyes, and then a very, very strong brow bone, so let's find the brow bones, um, head orientation, neck, forehead, depth, jaw, cheekbones are very, no, 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 he has a very narrow face, <clears throat> okay, so the chin, so I'm looking at it from the side here. I can see how much I'm moving the chin. And then the height. And the roundness. Actually, he's got more of this kind of chin. It's kind of underneath, eh? Yeah. All right. And then uh, the forehead. So ears, cheeks, eyebrow expressions. Um, where is the ears, cheeks, eyebrow expression? Mouth expressions, eyes. Hey, where's the uh, where's the forehead? Like like brow bone, like that. Um, no. Like that really really strong Neanderthal brow. Abu. Head. No. Chin. <clears throat> Glabella. I think this is it. No, he's got a very big one. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There we go. And then upturned. His nose is a little upturned. Just like that. It's a little lower than that. It's not that low. And then his cheekbones. Mouth. Eyes, ears, cheeks. The fat is all the way down. And the height is very low, and the bone size is very big. Yeah, I think this is Benedict Cumberpatch. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> it's very close to him. Um, but yeah, these, this is just basically the power behind Portrait Studio. You can uh, adjust your 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 settings here and customize your reference as you need it um, without having to go into Google and constantly look for the for the perfect angle and the perfect lighting and using E and R. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Oh, good thing we good thing we have rotation. Ooh. Want to fix it? We can fix it. Where is that? There we go. There we go. <clears throat> but yeah, we can change the settings and uh, control the lighting. I'm going to give him a bit more of like a dramatic lighting. Benedict. Let's give him some more Benedict lighting. Okay. Let's make it a bit brighter. Activity. Gonna have like a nice, nice oily chest. <laughs> Got no chest hair at all. It's gross. <laughs> no offense to anyone who doesn't have. Who's <laughs> got bare chest? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I like some of my tastes. All right. So yes, this is Benedict Cumbersnatch. All right. And keep the ambience high. And bring that down. <clears throat> I she looks like him a little bit. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the nose should be a little higher. He's got a very, very high nose. He also has a very defined um, uh, Cupid's bow. So there's a, there's that little issue. He has a very wide nose as well. So, let's see. Nose width. Yeah. Bridge depth. On the side. It looks a little like that. Or maybe like that. And the size is just bigger. No, it's smaller. Alright, and I'm just going to save this setting. Oh, you still have the funny little titles. Abu! <laughs> you still have the... Oh, wait, are these mine? Oh, no, these are mine. Oh, okay. Benedict. Save. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought these were the after the update was released. Oh, these are mine. These are my name sets, presets for the save spots. Um, yep, and that's it. Portrait Studio is now updated. And uh, have fun with your referencing. Show me what you guys have done recently with your reference use. Um, I'd love to see the kind of characters you guys build. And this is really this is this is a really uh, great program for character artists who have to put together like characters fast. And um, and kind of pre-design their uh, like their look without having to jump into a sculpting program. It kind of just gives you all the changes that you need by the uh, using blend shapes and uh, and sculpting. I'm sorry, I'm 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 very sick today. <laughs> all right, so let's drag some of these in here. <clears throat> all right, uh, I wanted to take a look at this um, uh, because uh, a lot of students don't kind of understand what's exactly going on with a darker skin tone. A darker skin tone, when it gets really, really dark, um, you really don't have, uh, so I have to jump back into here, you really don't have any visibility of the, like you don't have a mid-tone that has high contrast compared to the shadow, which has high con contrast compared to the highlight. All of the mid-tone highlight and shadow in darker skin tones are really, really close together. So, um, so let's zoom in. Okay, let's change her angle. Lighting, top down. Okay, let's make her darker. Where is it? Um, did I turn that on? Symmetry line. What? Bug alert! <laughs> Bug alert. Um, Abu, did you catch that? Alright, let's ignore this line. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Symmetry line. I was just, uh, just gonna turn this off. Um, um, I don't think this is happening with the male model, though. So let's, let's have a look-see. No, okay. So when we don't have, when we have reflectivity and specularity all the way down, this is what typically is happening in a darker skin tone, except for the eyes and everything. This is really, really dark skin tone. So we're talking about like, a, not just like a, a lighter skinned African uh, person, because they're really, really full, full dark. 
All right. I'm, I'm very careful with, with saying the word black. I don't like. I don't like using that. I don't know why. Uh, even though people say white all the time and no one complains. Um, all right. So what what I really want to show you is when you have a valley that is this dark, you don't really have a highlighter anymore, or or you barely have a midtone. They're really really close to each other in the palette. All right, so this would be your shadow, this would be your midtone, and this would be your highlighter. The only thing you have is the reflectivity and the specularity. That's all that's left after the skin value goes all the way back down. So these move hand in hand. We kind of give you power over both just so you can control how wet the face feels. So when you start out, your plate, when you're painting a darker skin, your plate should actually be... Um, painted without the specularity. So you bring all of this business down. I'm going to try to keep this one because the edge is so beautiful as you painted it. <clears throat> I'm going to use a new layer. Okay, so I'm darkening. And you see these specular areas here that are illuminated despite the fact that the light is coming in from the side? And that's because they're reflective, they're wet. The white of the eyes is very, very white. This means this photograph's been messed around with. They've edited it a lot, other than the clear um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the damn it, give me a second, I'm trying to remember what I was saying. Um, the, uh, oh my lord, the proportion issues that I have to jump into liquify to fix. So what we want to do is start off with this value because we're trying to we're trying to do the traditional midtone, shadow and highlight. And uh, the reason why we want to do that is because we don't want to confuse areas that are specular, areas that are shiny with areas that are with with, with the highlighter. That's not the skin tone we're talking about. And as a learning experience, don't confuse on darker skin. Don't confuse the specular shine with the midtone. Please write that back to me. So this is not his midtone. This is not the shade of his skin. His skin is actually right here. This is because his face is sweaty. So it's really hot near the equator. So his face is sweating. It's a cute kid though. It's like an elf. Okay, so I'm getting rid of some of these areas. I'm pushing some of the proportions to the side. Um, his eyes are tilted down, just like a really, really elf face. Wide, triangular. Tuck that out there. His eyes are tilted down. Might be a girl, I don't know. trying to make sure that you'll see in a second it felt like a lot of the mass of the face was kind of shaved off. So um, modeler, programmer, did you guys notice this error? Thank you, please fix it with the symmetry line. And I can't breathe. Alright, pushing this back. So before, after, see how that feels like a lot of mass was missing. So I've corrected that and I'm just going to raise the, I'm going to bring the shadows back down one more level using burn tool. I mean not burn tool, um, like multiply or, or burn on the brush mode. And this is just going to darken all the values one more time. And the reason why we want to do this is again, we don't want to confuse the highlight with the specular. Um, Put, like the actual specularity so that the highlight itself is because of the skin so the reason why we say you know choose your midtone choose your shadow and choose your highlighter this is outside of the specularity this is outside of wetness this is just basic really mattified skin shades <clears throat> so I'm trying to mattify it and then I'll build up everything according to the highlight and that's why it kind of looked like your version was lighter than him he looked like he had darker skin than your version and it was because of this Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just start building this up the way I would with a highlighter brush, uh, radially. 
and we're following very very specific patterns of shine the way the way uh, we have shine like a reflection reflecting the image around us so if there was a shiny door that door is actually visible on his forehead there was a shiny light in front of him on the camera or, or a door with light, light coming through it very very specific like um, trail the light has on the face See these two lines? This is the highlighter traveling along the nose. Where in yours, I don't think we just had that one shade which felt like the nose itself was having that highlight. That's the actual skin tone of the nose, which is wrong. So I'm not sure if I'll be able to paint over the whole thing, but I'll try just to show you exactly what I would do. So I'm just using a smudge brush just to unify some of these features together you have painterly brush strokes in certain areas and in other areas they're gone it's best to keep it consistent and shininess and smoothness of the surface go hand in hand you don't have shiny rocks if all of them are really jagged and really really messed up unless those rocks that have that micro texture is made of glass or something sorry one moment So smoothness of surface goes hand in hand with reflectivity. Write that back to me. So that's why I need to smoothen out the surface in order to really make this reflectivity read. Go back to a new layer and just radially build up that brightest hot spot. Really working like it's a reflection. Sometimes if I am in grayscale, I will go back and try to use dodge tool when I can. Because dodge tool just gives us that exact kind of burn that we have. Not really burn, but like illumination that we have or bloom that we have when we have a... It's too high. We have an object that is shiny and smooth reflecting the light around it. But it's, it's a very tricky little tool and I try not to depend on it because it's... Um, it doesn't distribute the way a brush would. It doesn't have control over the distribution. So we have two areas of the forehead that are like bulbs. They're very bulbous in shape. I'm just trying to find these two areas and we have that flat surface. And if we squint our eyes we can see that there is a stretch of shadow bridge right here. And I'm trying to disconnect that from the rest of the face. The side of this nose is completely in light, so what I do is I get a new layer and just build this up radially as my brush shrinks. And if I don't hit the exact level of white I have in the reference, it's okay, I can always go over it with dodge tool or just zoom in at a later time. But what I'm trying to do is create this bloom, this gradual build up of the illumination, the, the globe back. And then I know that there are specific sharp edges. And this is how I know these aren't the shades of his nose. His nose isn't just white in these areas. It's because of the sharpness. We don't have sudden jagged ending points for our highlights and our midtones. There isn't like, we aren't cell shaded. Areas that end suddenly have to be sourced from either a cast shadow or a su superior highlight. There is a very defined edge right along here. So do you guys understand what I mean when I say when you're drawing, painting really, really dark skin, there is no, there are no more real distinctions between highlight, shadow, and midtone. All you have left is this really, really um, muddy skin type that doesn't have much color in it. It's a very, uh, it has like all of the better colors that are that exist in the valleys. You have a lot of purples and, and darker African skin tones. But you definitely don't have those peachy pinks anymore. Unless you go back to light or tan. Alright. So I created that edge. I'm not so worried about this area. Because I will probably use my dodge tool. And just spike it back up and provide that bloom that we have. And I'm just 
Just the, the trail that the light is taking across the face is starting to feel more like reflection. It's really starting to feel like it is a shiny object versus a muddy looking object that has patchy skin. The skin under the eyes is always very, very shiny and lubricated and oily and hydrated. So this means that I, this, this lower area of the eye gets like a specific kind of value for it. And then we have this dark patch. This dark patch is where we have no more shine. Where we have a sudden presence. There's just the light hasn't reflected anything here. There hasn't been any light. And this is the actual midtone. This is the skin tone of this character. Right along there. So shiny objects don't reflect like unless it's like a perfect mirror, they don't reflect dark objects. So when you have dark patches and there's shine everywhere else, you know that there wasn't anything around reflecting anything back. So that area just took the nearest shade, which was the midtone. I'm going to find more of these specific areas, the sides of the nose as well. We have another one of those severe edges right there. So I won't be hosting class for Christmas uh, week, the, the world, from the 22nd, from here till probably Tuesday, I won't be hosting any classes. I'll probably host classes starting the 29th, so there will be quite a bit, a bit of a break. Okay, so I've just been notified that the symmetry line issue has been fixed and the patcher has is ready for an update, so let's see. Yes, stop. Okay, it's updating, one second. I just wanted to use the girl's face because it kind of has better um, blend shapes for drawing an African face. The female model does. Okay, so this area here kind of just gets a little less less shiny the lower it goes. These bugs just sprout out of the ground. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. No, please, please, God, no. No more sneezes. I'm trying to teach. Where else do we have these tracks of the light source? So we can see like this big shape here, this big teardrop shape going straight into the chin. And then the lips. And the lips, really, really shiny. And so we do this radially like we would a cylinder. The teeth are also very white. This is a, this camera, I mean this, this uh, photograph has been edited. Okay. Let's see if it was fixed. Moan. <clears throat> All right. So let's start in her value. Make her closer to her. You just press Q to uh, and pan. Q and pan to zoom in. And then reflectivity all the way down, but her value goes all the way down as well. And when we raise reflectivity and specularity, we can see that it's not the midtone that we're talking about here that's being changed. It's the shine. And if we go all the way up, you can see that these these trails of the light source actually, if we raise their like their shininess, their reflectivity, we raise them. We see that these weren't midtones. You can confi you can confuse these with midtones, but they're not. These are the midtones right here. That's the midtone. If I raised her value up, then we can see yes, those were the midtones. These are the usual areas we get shadow, usual areas we get light. We squint our eyes as where midtones hit. But the person is so dark they don't have uh, enough of a distinction. If we raise the highlight, if we raise the light in the area enough, we will end up getting more. Um, 
brightness added to the face, but if we had another girl beside her who was lighter skinned, she would get too much light on her face because the light was really strong. So we can't um, say that, oh yeah, this she's actually darker, but my light source is lighter. We can't say that. Prove to me that she is a darker value by showing the trail of light along her reflective skin. The darker you go, the more visible the oil oils of your skin are. Write that back to me. So a darker a darker ball, like a darker um, pool ball, shows highlights surrounding it better than a white pool ball. And so that's why when we're painting darker skins, we use these to our advantage, these specific highlights, these trails of the light source reflected. If it was a perfect sphere that was um, reflecting the light, then it would just show a perfect reflection of the light and the space around it. If there was a picture, so this unity allows you to put in like a picture. If there is a picture around here, like a, like if there was a horizon line. So if we turn off grayscale, it's actually reflecting the sky and the ground because it's mirror like. Go back to the model. It's doing the same thing, but of course it's not a perfect sphere anymore. So you have to find these, but of course skin tone isn't silver. It isn't some kind of steel surface or metallic surface. So we don't have a picture to, to, to uh, reflect off of it. All we have to do is find the basic trails of the light source. If this person person's reflectivity was raised all the way and they no longer had skin, then they would reflect the perfectly mirror-like the surrounding landscape. And that's why it's difficult to paint darker skin tone. Because you guys haven't created a, a distinction between the skin tone itself, separate, mattified from the reflectivity caused by the moisture on the skin. Which is very easy to blend into mid-tones with a lighter skin tone, but the darker you go, the more visible it is. When we do painterly stuff, even if you're going painterly, you can still have all of these units in there. This side of the nose is getting just a little bit more light. It's so weird. I just randomly remembered that Mike Tyson was in the latest Ip Man movie. What the hell was all that about? <laughs> that was fucking weird, man. Mike Tyson? Alright. Reflectivity on the lips. The lips get a little extra, like a line around them because that area is so moist. At that kind of rim that we have around the the, the lips, kind of like a white, pigment-free area. And then radially build up this lip highlight. First brush, first brush stroke, second one, third one. It's like he was trying to act all serious, but he really just. He really just ruined it. To think Ip Man has to deal with Mike Tyson. <laughs> oh my god. He's a funny creature. Alright, and then the sign. Right here. Radially. Always radial. Always glowing your brush outward, building your brush like a sand pile. Never from side to side. We're not flatlanders. We aren't limited to X and X and Y. We are. We can access the third dimension. And we just keep building this up very carefully. If we take too long to build these up, so if our um, if we have too much of a halo of grayscales around, it'll start reading like the skin tone is actually really bright. I want to keep it like his skin tone is actually dark, and he has moments of specularity. And that happens when we have really, really short bursts of light that don't have that much uh, build up to them. So what I do sometimes is I darken everything back down through shadows and midtones layer on the burn tool just so that I could make sure that I'm not too bright just starting out. This was it before and after. I'm just making sure that I stay dark. I'm not bringing in sudden new mid-tones by building up these highlights radially.
<clears throat> I think you kind of lost the gesture in the eyes. Yours has a bit more madness in it than uh, than this one here. It was a very, very gentle but curious expression. And it's about the visibility of the upper portion of the eye. Try to hide that area. If you want to avoid madness in the eyes of any kind, if you find that the eyes you draw are always of a different expression, ask yourself, are you showing too much of the upper part of the eye? This upper piece needs to be hidden for the eye to feel neutral. And this eye is looking in this direction, and this one's looking in this direction. <clears throat> Otherwise, what do you guys say? <laughs> In the drawing, it looks like he's puckering his lips. Yes, because the teeth aren't visible, so it's like he puckered them past the teeth. But if we bring the teeth back in, I think, uh... I think he won't look like he's puckering anymore. Maybe he still does. Mike Tyson. <clears throat> He's actually a really funny guy. I don't know why I'm talking about Mike Tyson. I feel like I'm such an old senile person who's really sick and drunk off Dayquil. Alright, and there's that beard shadow, that very specific shadow in the secondary light source here. You see how your secondary light source is like really, really wide. And that's making the skin tone again feel lighter, so you've again failed in another way of making the skin tone dark enough. You have to make sure that the skin stays dark and you have only momentary bursts of highlight. Write that back to me, guys. Oh no. I know I got a rain check on my other sneeze, but Lord, please don't let me sneeze this time delay it. I'll have like 10 sneezes in a row after I'm done class. Please, 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 please. I don't want to sneeze. I should not have done class today. <laughs> I should have canceled it. Moment, please. And by looking at the reference, we see that we have even more time left to, more space left to really raise these highlights up. So the more, the more you take your time with the bursts, and the more gradual they are, not gradual, they're supposed to be bursts, they're supposed to be sudden highlights, but if you take time in developing the image, the look of that, of that sudden burst, um, you will be rewarded. You will end up getting like this really believable reflection. What, what sometimes I do is I just, um, I get the dodge tool on highlights and I put on protect tones and I just raise the values that are already bright in here. And that's just another way to spike up the values as you might need them. And this high, uh, like a halo around the eyebrows, just, I don't know what it is, you guys always have halos around the eyebrows. You need to just cut them off, just like completely sever here too. If the, if the eyebrow is in a shadowed area, then that area will simply stay shadowed. And then we have those slight momentary bursts. I think I added those in. My bad. Blame it on the illness. Make sure the skin stays dark with only momentary bursts of light. Don't confuse the bursts of light with mid-tone. You guys already wrote that back to me. And there's a very, very distinct kind of like makeup under the eyes. And the waterline is pure black. The eyes are a little asymmetrical as well. They're of different sizes. Of course, my version is going to look a little bit more finish than yours is. But just to show that you do need this texture hand in hand with this with this skin type. So if you're going for a painterly look that's going to leave behind a very gritty texture, 
you're not going to get the believable skin tone that you're trying to go for, which is very, very dark. There was some more highlight, and again we have these two windows or these two lights. You can see the rest of them over here. These two are in the room. There's just like these two lights, just there. We're trying to make those two lights visible. You can even go to the extent of making their shape like a window shape. And that's the exact same technique for painting metallic surfaces. Try to find, by removing the specularity, separate the stage for specularity and shininess with the stage for the natural value of the object. So every metallic object has an actual value to it. It has a starting value. Write that back to me. Step one, find the starting value of the metallic object. And then step two, reattach the specularity back onto it. So separate the stages. And you'll eventually have a really believable, shiny buildup for the object that you're painting. I wish I tried to do this class when I'm not sick so that I could have a little bit more grace and delivery, but what can I do? It's a little bit of a blur this way. On the side of the nose, right here has some of the highlight beside her face. Did you just assume it's gender? Okay. And this highlight goes all the way down those two tails and then two dots. Like two exclamation marks. Kind of get darker around here. They actually stop right over here. <clears throat> this is about Portrait Studio. Oddly enough, my Portrait Studio patch, and after the patch, it's odd. I'm not sure if the links are allowed here, but I have an image example. Um. Uh, there are, if you have any bugs of any kind, please go to istabrak.com. I believe you can submit a form on the store itself. Just scroll down and submit a form and then submit your links in that form submission. And, uh, and we'll be able to help you after that. But uh, one by one, um, these, uh, these bugs will be ironed out. Sometimes we all have different, really different kinds of computers, and this isn't some um, uh, program that was developed with a massive team. It's a very small team that put it together, so we haven't uh, tested it in every single platform av available or, or run uh, extensive beta testing. All the, all the uh, changes that we have made, we made them through our own testing just as a small team. No outside help. Okay, and these eyes are hooded eyes, so they do have, they are reflecting back the surfaces around them, but not intense reflection. Always looking at the navigator, just always checking, making sure that I'm not overdoing it. We have more of that track, it's this, this kind of circular shape, not really circular, but like a curved L. I'm going to try to make that happen. And again, radially. Always radially. And these areas, these areas, these are all mid-tones. Real mid-tones, not, they're separate from the specularity. So before, after. Do you see how your version, even though it was painterly, your version was like a more of a Yemeni boy than a Nigerian boy. I'm assuming he's Nigerian. <clears throat> he looked more Arab or tan skin than than, uh, than African. Just outside of the measurements. Because their, your rendition was working more alongside, oh, that's mid-tone, that's highlight. No, this is not any, any way related to the three main shades or the three main cell shades of any skin tone. Th these are shines, this is the water. We, re we separate it from the formula and then reattach it. All right? <clears throat> yeah, the navigator is like zooming out. You guys have to, if you don't have this navigator on in your Photoshops, 
please consider turning them off. You just have to go to Window and then turn on the Navigator. So do you guys have any questions? <clears throat> Does that add highlighting the name for the owner? I'm sorry? Yeah, the, the, the hard brushes are better to yeah build the foundation of the painting, lay down some of your starting values, but always remember there is a formula to approach uh, anything in, when it comes to art and when it comes to metallic surfaces, and I consider darker uh, skin tones, like the dark skin tones, uh, as metallic surfaces because all of the shine is visible. I consider them in that department. So I have to separate the core shadows and the real values uh, from the actual specularity. All right, so I wanted to have a look at this person's uh, many 14-day challenges, but um, on a 28-day experience. And what they've done is they've tried to do a three-quarter view through 28 tries. And um, you can really see how they started to progress. This is day one, and this is their latest one right here. So compare this to this. Look at that stacking, the compression, good um, balanced between uh, the contours and the visible cross sections, the, the mesh is symmetrical in the rotation, so when you rotate a head from front view to side view, it should still look like it's the same on either side. Nice presence of the cube right there on the nose. <clears throat> The lips are just still a little bit, you're still showing the other side of the lip right there. Do you see that? You need to just completely get rid of that little bit. That little bit isn't isn't there anymore. Sometimes it's a little value, and then you have the extra value of the lip on top. Sometimes this is gone completely. And, uh, and you see these little wrinkles on the lips? They actually should be pushed to represent the surface of the object they're on. They're like, they're like little contour mesh lines these little pieces. So what you actually have to do is push them over. They actually curve alongside the C of the lip, the C shape of the cylinder that they're on. So you still showed them as if they were front view when they should be more like this. These are actual contour vertical latitude li longitude lines along the lip they should show the C just like we would show the cylinder the cylinder C outward if we had a bunch of wires wrapped around to see or if we use the coil technique the coil coils outward it's convex so the lip is convex and that's why we need to see these lines like that it'll help make the nose and the, and the face feel a little bit more believable you did used to have a super tiny nostril, and I think that's why you still have tiny nostril syndrome in your paintings. Her nose is actually pretty big, and the nostril is pretty small compared to the rest of the nose. So I would actually enlarge the nostril just a little bit, just to, just so that it matches the nose that it's coming from. And when it's bigger, it'll attract more secondary light source to it. <clears throat> you do have a quite a bit of shadow developing off the high high point here, so this would be the high point. It's perfectly balanced, and then we start getting into mid tones, and then we start getting into really dark tones around this point. But there isn't enough of a steep uh, drop, so between this value, this value, and this value, it's quite a drop. You see that how 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 low that's dropping, and that's how much I drop the the outer side. It still feels like it's hovering outside just a little bit more than it should. So I would actually push that in just a little bit more. Just so that it's aligned. As these values drop, this altitude drops. Right, so she wouldn't have this little chunk of, of swelling over here on the side unless she got her wisdom teeth from that. <clears throat> Tiny nostril syndrome. <laughs> Yeah, some people have paint, and then they, they, every character they draw has these tiny little nostrils. Um, this is a little low, just considering that this right here 
is the high point of the brow. But that's just me being nitty picky. I mean, it's it's uh, nitty picky, nitty picky, nitty nitty picky, nitpicking. I can't say nitty picky, right? Any any English <laughs> English specialists out here other than me? <laughs> I'm an offender of tiny TNS. <laughs> tiny nostril syndrome. Nitpicking. Yes. If I, if I last any longer in class, I will start getting high. I, I will. It's like this high that you get when you get sick. It just happens. Um, I wanted to take a look at this painting uh, because it's just some really major composition uh, errors. <clears throat> I'm going to grayscale. I'm going to go ahead and grayscale. The color is just getting in the way um, at this point. You have major fundamental depth and form issues that you have to address. The foreground isn't dark enough. The background is is we're basically looking at a sky that it's really it's really bright day outside. We're seeing all this detail. We're seeing every single window. It's a pretty bright day outside. So don't throw that gradient in. The framing isn't that necessary at this point, and we still do have framing. This brightness has brightened the background, and the the this, the distance does get a little bit brighter. If it's a desert scene, you do want to show that there is a cloud or a layer of sand before we actually get to the sky. Because that sand doesn't just settle, it, it gets in the air as well. And it's visible from a distance. So there's that. There's also the fact that all of these little pieces here are so far away and they're all just so visible and everything is just so crisp and clear. It's like we're looking at it with a microscope and we just seem together different microscope, not microscope, telescopes. And we've seamed all these images together through different pictures on the telescope. We need to show surface distortion or particles that are in the air that are distorting the image beneath them. There is also the fact that every single one of these little windows is visible, which is impossible. It is impossible that they are shining so much they are contesting the sky around them. It's like stars visible from their distance in the day in the, in the daytime if it's like midday and we're seeing stars out the only star that is visible in midday is the sun so we need to this is a very similar situation right here these 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 lights cannot contest the sky around them this needs to be turned into a silhouette of some kind when we do that everything seems to be fitting together now You've chosen a dark value instead of a light value for this outer rim of this ball. I'm not sure why, but uh, but you really need to show that this outer, this ball, this glass ball, is reflective. It's a see-through surface. It's going to be reflective. It has no color to it. It's going to just attach itself to the color surrounding it or reflect the color. So it needs to be a white reflection because it's reflecting the daytime around it. Well, depending on where the light source is coming from, this could, this glare could shine back this way, or it could shine back this way, or it could just completely create this haze on top of the snow globe. But whatever it is, it's just simply not going to be a black version of it. You inverted, you used the wrong shade for this. And not just that, in all of this, it is also going to be faded in the distance it is not going to have the same amount of reflectivity and not the reflectivity shit it's not going to have the same amount of <clears throat> I'm having one of those moments I'm sorry I don't, I don't know what what's happening to my brain uh, it's not going to have the same amount of contrast as the uh, surrounding landscape no, no, it's direct. That's not the word I wanted to choose. Please, please don't settle. It's it's not going to have the same amount of contrast as the focal point in the foreground. I know you want it to be the focal point, but at this at this point you have shared focal points, which means that not one is going to be stronger than the other, and definitely not the one that is in the in the distance. All right in the lower portion here. I'm sorry, I have brain fog when I'm sick. This is the price. You know, you don't get free lessons online without a price to pay. It's always a catch, you know? There's always a catch with these genies. Okay. So I'm going to have a little bit of extra glare over here. 
And this landing strip, I'm going to actually um, try to lower this reflectivity down just a little bit. This landing strip needs a little bit more definition. If it's like a landing strip, it needs to have like a z-axis in its design, something that shows that it's actually ready to land. And this plane is, it must be colossal, man. This is like, this is like next level. Like this is the size of a building. I, I mean, if it's on the same distance, you know, like it's just too big. I think you should shrink it and have a little bit more um, uh, cluster there. I'm going to try to uh, darken the foreground just a little bit more. He definitely needs to be a little darker, this little traveler. Don't know how he's going to get to the building. <laughs> Someone commented on my channel and said, Oh, your jokes suck so bad. Cringe. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Because it's so true. My jokes suck so bad. And finally, one honest person actually said cringe, and it's just like, yes, thank you. Like, it is such, they're such bad jokes. <laughs> they're the shittiest jokes ever. They're like, well, how is he going to get to the building? <laughs> so, um, yeah, anyway, when the sun is in the sky, desert scenes are usually <laughs> very connected to the equator, so they usually have the sun in the middle, but sometimes we have the, um, the sun leaning to one side of the sky, so usually that one side of the sky is uh, is bright. So yeah, feel free to let me know that my jokes suck. Like I, I'm aware that they suck. Like I'm aware I'm like a really really shitty joker person. Like I'm not a comedian. I'm like that teacher, that substitute teacher that just keeps making jokes and nobody's laughing. Everyone's like, oh my fucking god, this guy's trying too hard. I know. <laughs> you don't be shy to tell me. Alright, half the sky is in shadow. Specialty is art, it's not comedy. It may be funny to watch me laugh at myself, but I'm not like funny by creative, you know, force. I'm not a funny person. Alright, what else? So, as I said before, you need some z-axis over here, something to indicate that this area is getting some light on it, like it's a flat surface. So I'm trying to cast the shadow of the, of the, um, of the ball over here. See that? Because so, it's a flat surface, it's going to get some reflection on it. And then there's the composition itself. So if you just get into mapping out, just measuring some some rule of thirds, something something to just organize the photography. So yeah, you're saying I'm not a photographer. I don't have to do the photography. Um, you still have to. Sorry. <clears throat> to get a good composition, you have to organize the units on the painting properly. So what I would do is I would actually push this guy over here and push this unit over here. So let's actually try it. Alright, so what am I doing? I'm doing this. And then I'm doing... I'm gonna bring in like a little bit more. <clears throat> nope. Okay, so just bring this a little bit more. So this, this ends up getting its own specific crosshair and point of interest. And um, you can even push it down so it touches both of them, so it takes up more space in the canvas. So I would actually try it this way to get both those pieces. All right, so this is why we use measuring tools because they help us decide how we're f framing this cinematically. And now the cam now the, the the horizon line is pretty low, but it's okay. Actually, you can make it as high as it was before. I mean, it's only cuz of the paint over that it's getting lower. This is turning into a really botched up job. <clears throat> but really, your classes are entertaining. I mean, I didn't say it's not funny watching someone laugh at themselves. I'm just not a comedian. <laughs> I appreciate honest criticism. I really do. I mean, I'm sure you guys know that. Because I teach and stuff. I like when someone is just brutally honest. Cringe, your jokes suck. <laughs> I'm just going to stop laughing. That was the best. Probably some 14-year-old kid or something. 
the older you get, the more susceptible you are to just censoring your opinion. All right. So it, the before was a little bit too far away from, the, it was just like an empty space in here. And I'm trying to create a relationship between this guy and his destination. And then there's the, 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 uh, I'm sorry about this, this, this blur right here. Um, and then there's the, uh, the unit scale to help us create depth. So this, this thing, this floaty city is, uh, is too close to us. It must be colossal the more we move in. And I want it to feel like this guy has some work left before he gets there. So I'm going to just shrink it. And I'm really going to shrink it this time. Right, like I'm talking like all the way over there. And I probably should raise this ball to be a little bit... So I'm trying to shrink it so that it's still near or on one of these crosshairs. This one or this one, preferably this one. But there would still be too much space in between. So between this and this, I'd probably put another ship. This is stuff you're supposed to be doing in the first like 10 minutes of the sketch. You should not be doing this so late because look at all the seams that I had to make. Look at all the mess that I left behind just fixing this. <clears throat> Alright, so scale is used to your advantage. You can do it well, you can make it this big. Alright, you can make it this big. Or you can make it that small. It's just you have to start using scale. This object is too close to his size. It's just awkward. It's floating awkwardly. And then all of that compared to... Whoa, no. Compared to... Uh, what you had before, which was just, um, it was really confusing and difficult to look at. You had this stuff awkwardly on the side, you had all the space in between. The character was just a little bit too, uh, too off in the distance. The, the, the photography was bad. It's not the painting that was bad. The photography. And it felt like this was made of like a mesh, or like a net, instead of a reflective glass. And then right behind it, we should be seeing some of the horizon line, actually, right through the glass. Something like this. So it actually feels like a floating city. And if it is using some kind of floaty device, like, I don't know, aero, I don't know what it would be using, like, like these things, these hover forces. I think you should show some like surface disturbance or something with sand or just something to show that this stream of energy has created like these swirls or these tornadoes or mini little gusts of wind to show that this object is constantly in motion and show the disturbance around it that it's a uh, it's an active force, not like a just a random floaty ball. You can show some more of the surrounding landscape as well. As we saw before, reflective objects have that metallic quality to them. <clears throat> okay, and the colors, the colors you had, I think you have too many issues with composition and you don't have enough texture studies behind you to try to paint glass in a landscape uh, masterpiece. So I think you should drop colors for now to, cri like, to critique your colors. Your colors were way too saturated. So I'm going to lose my paint over, it's fine. But I want to show you that your colors need to be somewhere there for, for, a, for a desert scene. You're not gonna, like, if you have, like, this, this looks like turmeric. It's not, it's not it's anything, it's not right. It's too saturated. There just simply isn't enough pigmentation in sand to cause that. And then I would invert these two, the, these right here. This would be that sand correction that I made. Just this alone is what you can start with and then push this guy a little bit more forward. A nice white sky sometimes is uh, all you need. And then the reflective surface, and that could be where you start. Or just completely grayscale it. 
and then focus on uh, what you're doing. I think the, the sand is too dark. Just looking at the gray scales of the sand. Cancel, flatten. Yes. <clears throat> so that's it for today. Um, sorry, I've been really sick. I'm. I, I mean, I didn't want to do the class today. I didn't want you guys to have to go through listening to my stuffy voice. But um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, go to YouTube if you guys want to watch the critique, uh, the recording. Uh, leave behind some likes and subscribes, won't you? Um, go to Google Plus if you want to join the um, scholarship. You want to be runner-ups for this? I don't know what. To, if you want to join the scholarship opportunity, uh, just go to the My Transformation Grant category and post your submission there. Uh, Facebook is where I sent back pieces. If if you don't message me in time, you don't get them because I delete them in like two days. Um, like I don't store people's paintings and all my paintovers. I don't store them. I just delete them now. Um, so if you don't message me back, I, I probably will delete them. You can always screenshot. I mean, I upload in 1080p. You can always screenshot um, instead of getting the full pieces. But if you make it in time, I can give you back your paint overs. Twitter is where I announce class cancellation or changes to class hours or anything else of importance. And Instagram is just where I have some of my sketches. Um, but uh, thank you everyone for watching. Um, we will have a class this Thursday. The, 20 sec the 20th and the 22nd, um, but we will not have class on the 27th. <clears throat> all right? It's so cool that Christmas and all that stuff is on a Sunday now on Saturday. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.